The machine consists of basically three things. First, there is this vibration unit that controls and removes all vibration. Then there is a coarse motion stage to move the sample around in an XY direction. Then the third thing is the scan head. The scanning head is a piezoelectric machine that by piezoelectric forces can scan across the surface with the tip. This machine basically operates like a blind man with his dick that he uses to walk around. He feels things in front of him with his stick. The machine, this machine, do exactly the same thing. It uses a very, very small probe, a mechanical needle sort of that sends the surface contour and by dragging this needle across several positions you can making a raster image and create a topography of the surface there are different techniques to to do this dragging the most basic one is called the contact mode and that when you drag the tip close to the surface and and to actually have physical contact. That method is, is very nice because it's easy, but it can also be troublesome, for example, if your sample is, is sticky or wet or something. So it only works on very hard surface. The resolution is also not so very nice with that technique. The third, uh, the second technique you can use is tapping. And in the tapping mode, you don't drag the stick across, but you tap on the surface like this. By doing that, you can, you can decrease the friction forces. And that thereby make it more easy to scan more tough material, more soft materials and things like that. The third technique is to use a vibration, vibration tuning fork that goes across the surface and with, with the small space between. And then you can measure the, the shift in resonance frequency of the tuning fork that is caused by the attraction of, 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 of the surface, between the surface and, and the tip. So then, then you have sort of non-contact. And that technique is also called non-contact mode. You can also see there are some labels here saying that beware of laser and thing. That is because to measure the amplitude of the tuning fork in the machine, they use a laser, so you shine a laser on top, on top of the tuning fork that has a reflective surface backside. And then the tuning fork flip up like this then the beam will take another trajectory and then you can measure that that change in beam part and do some calculation and thereby make a conclusion what actually had happened with tip so that's it's how it operates There are lots of machines like this this is the dimension 2000 system that's the most classic I think uh, nowadays, uh, uh, this machine has sort of become old. Uh, the machines just get smaller and smaller, and now you can buy tabletop AFM that's that uh, uh, quite good performance and that you can use in classrooms and things. We have one of those as well, and I will show you that now. So here I sit with another type of atomic force microscope. This one is much smaller and more of a teaching experience. The, this particular one can only run in contact mode, but it still produces quite good image. And it's uh, very useful for this demonstration, for example, because here you can easily see what's going on. So here you can see the scanning tip in detail. On top of here, you have the actual scanning tip. Small, small needle that you see above this laser light. It's barely visible. This scanning head has a coarse motion up and down so that it can approach the surface. But when it's done that, it starts to scan with the piezoelectric motion. The laser light you see here comes from this side, goes up, is reflected in tip and goes down to a sensor below here. In that way you can measure when the tip deflects when it touches the surface. Due to deflection, the laser light will change position on the sensor here. If you then measure the position of the laser spot on the sensor, then this will be correlated to the reflection of the tip, and thereby correlated to the force. The amplitude of the force is thereby given because you know the spring constant of the tip. The tip is replaceable, so I'm going to show you how to do that.
So I start by putting on this protective cover. That's just so, so you don't drop the tip inside the machine. Then I put on this weight here, and that will release the spring that holds the tip. Then I need to use this tweezer to grab the old tip, like so. Then take a new tip from the box. And then gently place it on top of here. You see? Depending on the system, either you need to align the tip or it aligns by itself. This one, however, is self-aligned, and that's because it has small growths into the silicone, so it only fits in one way. Then I remove the metal weight, and the spring will flip back and hold the tip securely in place. Remove the cover then, and we are ready to use it again. So that's how you replace the tip. I have already lowered the probe on top of the sample and start scanning. And what you can see here in the image, these two images that you see on screen represent the topography mapping of the surface. White color represents something that's high, black color something that's low, and yellow something that is in between. You also see there are two images. These two images represent when the tip scans in one direction called forward, and then when it comes backward in the backward direction. So the left image only contains the data when it scans from left to right, like this. While this one only contains data when it scans in backward direction. You do that to avoid the hysteresis. When this pizza electric system scans the surface, you get a hysteresis between the backward and forward scan. If you would, Put all that data into the same image, each and every second line will be offset a little. You can see that the size of this square is 40 by 40 micrometer. So the thing that you see here is quite small. Now you can see it's completed the first image. These orange looking lines in the picture you see represent bars on a silicon disk that's been etched. So this is the sample we study, a silicon material. Here you can see a magnified top view of the tip while it scans the surface. The substrate is silicon and you can see that it's also a calibration sample that I only use for this demonstration. Here you see it in a side view. While the tip scans the surface it deflects when it hits something and the laser picks up that when it reflects on the tip's backside. As I told you earlier, when the tip deflects it changes the beam part of the laser and thereby you can measure the force that is interacting with the tip. You can also see that the size of the square is 40 by 40 micrometer and scans with 100 points. That means each pixel here represents 400 nanometer in size. And 400 nanometer, that is sort of the resolution of light microscopy. So this is sort of the same what you can see light microscopy. But in this system you can increase resolution much higher. The atomic force microscopy is one of the instruments that has the absolute highest resolution. Now I set the system to zoom in a little. Now the size is 15 by 15 micrometer. And I also increased the scanning resolution. Now it scans 156 points per line. So the details you see here is much higher than in light microscopy, for example. While scanning, we want to keep the force on the tip constant. And that means that we want to have no deflection in the tip. So the feedback loop that regulates this try to achieve that. We can go in and check to see if the deflection of the tip actually is constant. So here is the deflection map of the tip. White means that the tip has been bented upwards and black means it has been bent downward. If this is sort of correctly adjusted, then this image will be sort of like the derivative of the topography map. And that you can see is almost true here. You can see some contrast at the edges of these bars that you saw in the previous images. If you go down and look at these ones here, these are cross-section view of one single scan. For each line it scans, it shows the data here. So this is the height versus the width of the sample. The black line is when the probe goes up and down the mountains and valleys in the forward direction, while the gray line is when it goes in the reverse backward direction. 
And obviously when it scans a sample, the forward and back direction should be quite similar. So these two curves shall match up, more or less. Without a small offset, that is. If they don't match up, that means you haven't configured the system optimum. You can also see now when we scan with higher resolution, it also takes longer time. Usually you increase performance by decreasing speed of the scan. When you scan an image, it usually takes between 10 minutes and 1 hour to scan an image, depending on the sample and the resolution you require. You don't have to scan with constant force all the time. You can scan with the tip deflecting more or less constantly. That is more in a constant height mode operation. That can be very useful, because if you choose a constant height, less things will interfere with the measurement, and you can scan really fast. If speed is critical, then constant height mode is the most suitable. So, now the image has been finished. Let's see how it looks like with this three-dimensional view. Here you have it. So the sample consists of these bars that goes across the surface. We see also some rough edges also, and that is a poorly configured system, so we can optimize this a little bit better, I think. But we save that for the next time. Okay, that's it. I think I showed you and demonstrated the most basic features of the atomic force microscope and showed you how it operates and what to do.